So welcome back friends. Uh, today we will be learning how to perform different types of small sample tests in SPSS. Basically we will focus on comparing uh, mean tests. So we will uh, study today students t test which is a one sample t test. So then moving forward towards two sample t test or two independent sample t test which is also called as the Fisher's test and we will look at paired, paired t test. Uh, in between we will also see about the F test which is uh, used for the purpose of comparing the variance and then we also look at ANOVA when we want to compare the averages across more than two groups. So uh, this is the data set as we have been using this data set quite often these days and already we have we have some idea about this database. This is the serial number, this is the name of some individuals, this is their gender coded as 0 for female, 1 for male and then educational level we have three educational level if you can recall. Uh, this is business graduate, engineering graduate and uh, general graduate. So they are <coughs> categorical data. We have age which is in terms of number of completed years. We have designation. There are three designations, uh, director, we have officers and we have executive. So officer is at the lowest level, in between is the executive and at the top is the director. This is the salary before increment and this is the salary after increment. So all the employees got some increment. So these are the salaries after increment. This is their salary uh, before increment. These are in 1000 rupees. And then performance indicator which is a number between 0 to sorry 1 to 5 and then emotional intelligence a number between 1 to 10. So this is the uh, data set that we are using and we have some agenda items and we will uh, check it out one by one. For example first is this test if the average age of the employees is equal to 35 years. So this is a one simple t test we are going to perform and check whether the average age of the employees is 35 years and then we have to test it separately for males and females. So let us take up the first one first that is let us do this that average age of the employees is 35 years. So we go back to our database to compare uh, or perform first uh, one sample t test we go to compare means we pick up the second option and that is one sample t test. So we click on one sample t test so we get this. And then we want to compare age. So we select age from the uh, left side and put it in the right side. So that is our test variable. And the value that we want to check is 35. So we type in 35 here and then we click on OK. As soon as we click on OK, the out output window gets active and we can see here uh, that this is the corresponding T value. This is the DF and this is the corresponding P value. So null hypothesis is that the average age of the participants or the employees of the organization is 35 years uh, but as you can see here the p-value is less than 0.05. The p-value less than 0.05 indicates that the null hypothesis is rejected. So we actually reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the average age of the employees of the organization is uh, not 35 years. It is actually something else. If you compare at the uh, this uh, some descriptive statistics that has been generated we will find that the average age is 41.85 that means it is quite higher than the actual age. So this is the situation where it stands and uh, this is uh, about one sample t test. Uh, we next go to the second uh, this part only there are two options that uh, test it separately for males and females. Well uh, we come back here there might be other ways of doing it also but I prefer to do it like this at first we keep only male data in our uh, from our database. So for that what we go, we go to data and uh, then we go to, there is an option uh, selective. We go to at the end and there is a select case. So we go there and then we write down here. So we take if condition. So we click on the if condition. So it is related to gender. So we click gender, we bring gender in this side and then gender equal to 0. 0 represents female so gender equal to 0 and then we click on continue we click on ok. As soon as you do this uh, you can go back to the uh, database and you find that all the male, male cases are striked off from your database. That means now your database consists of only female observations. Though practically you are seeing the male data set also male values also but the thing is that this is now uh, not existing in your database they are not been used. Uh, will not be used in further analysis unless and until I switch off the select <laughs> command. So now we usual procedure we go and compare means and one sample t-test this one we do everything is fine just go ahead 
so we make a comparison here so accordingly we get this value and here you see once again the significant value earlier it was 0 0.00 at 0 0.001 but even then less than 0 0.05 and hence we uh, reject the now hypothesis and conclude that the average age of the female employees is uh, different from 35 years so that is how we conclude this we we close this window come back to our database so this is our database now i want to check it for males no issues go to data go to select cases and now here you change the condition you just click on if and then you make it one and now you click on continue and click on okay now you can uh, see this and now you see all female cases are actually striked off from your database now your database actually all analysis will be done only with the male cases what we do is that we go to analyze we go to <coughs> compare means that usual process one sample t-test everything fine go ahead just simply go ahead and so we go ahead and we have performed this and so now you see it's 0 0.44 actually now the average age of the males in the sample is 40 it is coming closer to 35 but even then even then it is still less than 0 0.05 and still we are in a position to reject our null hypothesis so we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the average age of the male employees of the organization is significantly different from 35 years so this is how we conclude and this is how we, how we do it now we come back to your database i need to strike uh, bring back my original data I don't want is it striking off so I go to data I go to select cases and I click on all cases and then I click on okay as soon as I click on all cases uh, you see your uh, this uh, database becomes free of the striking off that means you are enjoying now the entire data set and you some new variables got created like filtering so this is the output of uh, when you actually executed the select cases so then just you may clear it so just it got cleared so your fresh database is the original one where we come back so now let us look at the second agenda uh, display mean salary of both males and females and test uh, if uh, if the if the uh, if there is significant difference in their averages okay also test if engineering graduates are paid more than business graduates okay this is another test uh, though same test but for different uh, so mean salary of male and female are to be compared so we go to analyze now and uh, we go to compare means and now we go to independent sample t-test so we perform independent sample t-test test variable is salary so preferably we take salary after increment if you want that simultaneously i want also to test salary before increment for male female and salary after increment for male female then you may click it bring it this side but i i don't want this i want to compare only salary after increment okay now gender we click on gender and bring gender in this side so i bring gender in this side and then we we want to define the group so we click on these groups and then we have to there are two groups here one group is zero which is representing female so i type in zero another group is one so it is represented by male uh, so i type zero and one and then i click on continue that is done and i now i click on okay everything is done now so here you get uh, these are the mean values okay the uh, salary after increment so this is a male female are getting uh, females are getting 46,000 males are getting 47,000 uh, very close to 48,000 on an average but whether this difference is significant what does it tell now here you see there are two rows been created in this table one assumes that variances are equal one assumes that variances are not equal now you see first we look at this value uh, now for equal variances this value will be more than 0 0.05 but here it is not the case it is less than 0 0.05 this means that variances are not equal this is the f test f test automatically comes up with the t test two independent sample t test so here we assume that the variances equal variances are not assumed here this this row will look because the hypothesis related to equality of variances are rejected so that's why we look at the second row not the first row and here is the t value what is the corresponding p value you see 0 0.69 which is quite bigger than 0 0.05 indicating that the null hypothesis needs to be accepted because for rejecting the null hypothesis 
this p value should be less than 0.05 which does not happen here so the null hypothesis is accepted and we conclude that the average salary of the males and the females are not significantly different so this is how we uh, draw the conclusion for this question okay now let us look at this agenda another one is there that also test additional if engineering graduates are paid more than business graduates okay fine engineering graduates and business graduates are to be compared not the general graduates okay now in our database we come here let us see what was the code for engineering graduate and business graduate you see engineering graduate is 2 uh, business graduate is 1 general graduate is 3 which is not to be in comparison not to be brought in comparison okay fine now what do we do we may go on from here also remember 1 and 2 are the codes that are to be compared so we go to analyze we go to compare means we go to independent sample data okay fine now salary is not the uh, thing which we want to compare yeah salary uh, yeah what is that let me check out once uh, are paid more that means salary okay fine salary is this but not compared for gender bring it back take in educational qualification and grouping variable remember the grouping variable are now one for engineering graduate uh, and i think two for business graduate is it so no one for business graduate two for engineering graduate. so fine one and two are to be compared not three continue and then till code okay that's all it's done once again uh, this table so you see business graduate average salary 47,000 engineering graduate seems to have got more in the sample but whether this different is significant let us check out here what is the condition of the variance variance is more than 0.05 p value here that means we accept the null hypothesis it needs to be less than 0.05 for unequal variance but it is more than 0.05 it indicates that the variances are equal so we go with the first one first row First row we go on. This is the corresponding p will. What is the corresponding p will? This is 0 0.402, which is more than 0 0.05. So it is more than 0 0.05. So we accept the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? That the average salary of the business graduate and the engineering graduate does not differ significantly. So we go on ahead with the null hypothesis, uh, accepting that the salary does not differ significantly. Here we can see some difference in the sample, but this difference is not significant enough that is what we conclude uh, let us stop here let us go for what compare the average salary of the employees before and after increment and test if the change is significant at five percent level compare the average salary of employees before and after increment and test if the change is significant at five percent level very nice let us go on here so we come to the data view we may do it from the variable view also so i want to compare this one and this one they are average whether really there is an increase significant increase is there or not so what to do we go to analyze here we go to compare means and then we go to paired sample t test so paired sample t test we compare click here little bit different type of table but from here we click click and take it drag and take it there salary before increment and uh, then we click the salary after increment and put it under variable 2 so you will see the they are now in these two positions a new row gets created ignore it so now you can compare click on ok so here you see paired sample test statistic all these things however interesting what we are is this is the corresponding t value t.72 and then look at the p value so p value is less than 0 0.05 so what is your null hypothesis that the average salary before is equal to average salary after now this p value is less than 0 0.05 indicating that you can are now in a position that you can reject the null hypothesis that means you can now conclude that the average salary before uh, is significantly less than the average salary after and you can see it here also this one is 41000 this is 47000 so the and uh, the p value tells that this difference in the sample is a significant difference so that you can tell that the same thing goes forward in the population as well so this is how we make a conclusion based on paired sample t test okay now let us close the output window now in the data let us see at the last agenda of today's uh, video the test if the average salary of the employees after increment varies across a different designations so you remember there are three designations one Executive one is officer and one is 
director. So we want to compare the average salary of uh, that. Okay, no issues. Come back to your data. So this is your average salary. We generally we are dealing with after because that is what our concern should be, not the past salary. Uh, so we go to analyze. Go to compare means and then we have to go to one way ANOVA. In one way ANOVA, salary after increment that is the dependent way, salary after increment. And then we want to compare designation. So we compare designation here. So we bring designation here and that's all. We go click OK and uh, then we get this ANOVA table. Now this ANOVA table, what is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis there uh, here is that the average salary is equal across the different groups. That means what salary the officers are getting, almost same salary the the, the uh, uh, executive is get, uh, executives are getting at uh, almost similar salary. On an average, they are comparable, like director is also. But this null hypothesis is heavily rejected because p value is less than 0 0.05. Now when I get such a result. When I reach to such a result in NNOVA, I want to find out that whether who is better, whether it is the director who is getting much more salary than the executives and officer or officer is getting much less salary than the director and the executive or director uh, officer is getting less salary than the executives also much significantly less and significantly less from the director as well whether the difference of salary between director and uh, executive is also more. That is, we think of all the possibilities, of the, all the possibilities of pairwise comparison. So for, to get that, once we get here, our null hypothesis is getting rejected. If our null hypothesis is accepted, then we don't want to look at, as a, at a pairwise comparison. But once it gets rejected, then I want to have a look at that. So I close it, okay, and uh, then I come back here. So what I do, I go to analyze. I go to compare means, I go to uh, one way ANOVA, that, that is what we have done. Now we go to post hoc tests and there are a host of post hoc tests out of which QK is generally used and then we uh, click on continue and uh, then we click on OK. So these are called as post hoc tests. This is generally done when your ANOVA rejects the null hypothesis of equality of uh, group means and then we perform post of test and click OK. Now here you see this is the same table we have got it once again. Uh, that means our null hypothesis is rejected but along with this we get this that is a pairwise comparison between officer and executive. Now look at this here uh, this is the p value. So it is uh, not uh, less than 0 0.05. This indicates that the average salary of officer and executive does not differ significantly. But as you look here, officer and director, this value is less than 0 0.05. That means officer and director, their salary is much different. And if you look at this value, this is negative. It indicates that officers are getting much less salary compared to the director. Uh, on an average, they are getting around 16,000 less than the director. Okay, let us have a comparison between executive and director. Because executive and officer and officer and executive, they are the same thing. They will give you the same P values. 0.924, this is also 0.924. But look at this, executive and director, this is also 0 0.00. That means less than 0 0.05. That means executive and director, also there is a bulk of difference. And if you look at this, it's around 15,000 uh, less uh, the officers, executives are getting compared to the directors. That means director is higher up. They are on an average in a much significantly higher salary that they are getting. However, officer and executive, they are not much different. For example, here this is also negative, but only you see by 1,000. 1, so there is no significant difference in salary of officer and executive and director is taking an advantage of and getting, enjoying a handsome salary. Okay, thank you for watching this video.